Hey guys, welcome to my vlog of the week. I will walk you guys through some of my workflows and I guess our typical day. So right now it's about 12 o'clock. This morning is mostly about like finishing up some of the design docs and uh, making sure everything is smooth before I go ahead and fix some more features. So I will take you guys along with me. But first, I'm gonna start with the subway. So let's get to it. So to give you guys a little bit more insight about our typical development process, especially at my company, first we identify like an issue, like a problem that we want to solve. And then the next thing, someone from our broader team, maybe someone customer, client, sales facing, they will do some sort of research trying to see if this issue is like indeed important by either collecting feedback, maybe the customer already been complaining and submitting feedbacks. So once a task and the problem is identified, it will be triaged, meaning during the meetings, we will talk about it between our cross-functional team, such as UX, PN, PGM, and then the eng team. And uh, once we think this is an important project that we want to accomplish, we will assign it a priority and then assign it to like a specific quarter. And for this quarter, this one task that I'm working on is one of the higher priority project. So after, we discuss and have an issue like I guess it's kind of like volunteering but it's also up to the manager so you can express your interest in certain projects and have conversation with your manager trying to be like hey I'm really interested in this project and I want to work on now let's fast forward so now you want to start the project the first thing you have to do is to make sure you have enough data point like you understand what the project is doing and a lot of the time what you have to do is like you have to draft a design doc meaning you have to talk about the high level overview of like what you want to achieve and what are you planning to do. This will definitely require you to look through our current code bases and trying to see what type of data model that needs to be changed, whether you need to update like a certain field or create a complete different table or what's the game plan if you decide to update a database column and then you have to make sure it's backwards compatible and you know so it's all those questions that you have to address on the design doc and once you come up with a draft of the design doc talking about like what are some of the steps that you want to do and what issues are relevant you will be sending it out to review most likely your tech lead your manager other team members so they can have an understanding of what you want to accomplish and see if it's reasonable generally speaking there could be a design doc review meeting where you will be presenting the case and then other engineers will chip in and ask questions. That's not as common, it's only common if it's a really large project. And after the design doc, you will be working on the project, of course. And for me in particular, I like to look through the code and really trying to understand what I'm doing. I will play it in a sandbox environment, just, I call it sandbox, but it's just my local environment. I would just try to plug in different code and see how it would function before you submit anything typically speaking like we do full stack development so we work closely with the ux team they will come up with like a design using figma and share the design with us and it's up to us to say like hey this doesn't match with our current style and if you want to do this like let's say like a drop down versus like a checkbox or something like maybe other part of the application it's not currently using this pattern. So you have to address it from an end perspective and work closely with the person, the UX person to come to the middle point. So yeah, that's a typical design project workflow. Like, So right now I'm in the phase where I am working closely with the UX person, trying to come up with a feasible and reasonable front end workflow. Cause there are a lot of times where different users can have different approach to how to navigate this app and it's very important to cover all the cases especially like edge cases and always good to address these issues yeah that's a that's a quick higher level overview of a typical design flow of my company and uh, i'm gonna get back to it and next part i will update you guys more about the details of how the coding process and discussion works so stay tuned <laughs> Luca here. Today is uh, Tuesday and uh, right now it's about 10 o'clock. This is when I generally start eating. 
and uh, this morning has all been about modifying and revising our design doc. So a little bit about it. Before we start coding, like I mentioned, like you want to write your approach. So now I'm finalizing it and sending it out to the team. And then later during the stand-up, I will talk a little bit about it, about like what I'm going to do first. So generally speaking, I like to have the data model ready and then start implementing that because everything else relies on it. Like your front end APIs and everything needs to have the back end ready. Afterwards, I'm probably gonna be working on some services. So we use uh, our internal service tool, which <laughs> that's my cat, Koji. And so afterwards, once the service, oh my God. So once the service is ready, I will be able to test it using any sort of tools just to send out like a fake request, for example, and see what happens. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. My cat is going wild right here. Look at her. All right, so let's get to eating. Hey guys, we got back here. This is pretty much it for Tuesday. And today, what I have been working on is mostly, like I mentioned, like start the coding process. And um, I would say before the project even started, I did a lot of research because a lot of the tools or internal data that we need, some other team may already have done it. So what I did was to reach out to them and ask if they have some sort of API endpoint or any sort of backend services that we could potentially reuse this way we don't have to re-implement certain things. And uh, also looking to some of their data models to see how we can best extract the data if we do decide to use their services. So that's pretty much something that I have been doing. And uh, yeah, for the rest of the day, I'm just gonna keep diving in. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy. <laughs> So yeah, right now it's about 8 o'clock and just got off work and generally speaking after work I like to eat some good food and then take it easy. Sometimes I work out and sometimes I watch some YouTube videos or maybe even play some games. Occasionally we like to go outside and eat but that has been less frequent. After work I like to do stuff that's not really coding lately because of the project. But I also do do some coding on the side, just for fun. And uh, yeah. Hey guys, it's uh, Wednesday and uh, it's uh, currently about 9 a.m. So I generally log in around this time, sometime earlier. And today, like I mentioned, it's mostly just gonna be some of the team meetings that I brought up, that cross-functional team to go over some of the designs and uh, continue working on this project. Besides that, nothing too much, I guess. Yeah, this week, Overall, feels really long. Like, cause currently, like this project is like really taking off, and uh, I have to attend a bunch of meetings and talk to different teams, talking to like different teammates, writing design docs, coding, and uh, it's only Wednesday. <laughs> feels like a Friday to be honest. But I will probably get started on some coding, and of course, drinking my green tea in the morning. And uh, I generally work for about like an hour and an hour and a half and then I eat breakfast and my breakfast normally is just yogurt and uh, some granola if I have it but I ran out so <laughs> I'm just gonna eat yogurt um, besides that I will check in with you guys probably after lunch to update you guys on my meeting and uh, what went well what didn't go well so stay tuned we're gonna go get some lunch today follow me Good morning guys, it's uh, Thursday and uh, today has been really really nice so far. I've been drinking my morning tea, of course. And uh, yeah, so I didn't update you guys yesterday because I was really busy. It was like a lot of meetings back to back talking about the ways we want to move forward with the approach, like 
different corner cases and uh, we really wanted to finalize it so a lot of the time like one meeting may not be enough so we had to create new meetings to include everyone so generally speaking a lot of the time when we do these design reviews we have one designated meeting with the UX team and uh, if everything goes well then sure like that's amazing if not then maybe we have to set up another meeting with the UX team but sometimes we might have to ask the PMs for certain questions like how certain features or like certain corner cases needs to be treated because sometimes like it's not just up to us so like we have to make a separate meeting to in get the PMs involved and uh, even the customer side so all those stuff takes time so sometimes like when we bring up a workflow like we want to offer our approach and uh, the UX team offer theirs and we want to meet in the middle somehow and then we bring the whole idea to the PMs and then yeah and go from there and maybe we have to update the it's not called the design doc it's project proposal doc like they have to update it because like on the project proposal doc there are a lot of like p0 which is like the highest priority items like that needs to be changed to better reflect what the project should represent and uh yeah that's pretty much it and today since after all those meetings like most of the direction is clear I can start it with some sort of front end. The back end is not quite ready yet, so like the data model hasn't really been updated yet. But I can start shifting the front because like we also want to make the front end looks a little different. So like I can start playing around with it, maybe use like a fake data, like test data, yeah, to see what the workflow should be. I think it's always a good idea to play around with it and then have a really good understanding of the project. So yeah, I will update you guys soon to let you guys know how that goes. Like, I, I could be completely doing different things, like front-end, let's say like, oh, let's just wait till the back-end, but uh, without the front-end, it's kind of hard to demo, like showcase like your progress. Of course, you can show like calling your back-end services, but that's boring, no one wanna see that. So yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Hey guys, so now it's about 7 o'clock, so I just got off work and today, like I mentioned, it was mostly coding. As you can see, I changed my shirt because uh, I was working out. You saw my workout video, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Yeah, let's do this. And uh, today, mostly, it was the thing that I talked to you guys about. I ended up not going for the front end just yet. I went ahead and just started implementing the back end because it made more sense to me to approach it from the back-end service perspective trying to really think about what type of data model we need and uh, I generally speaking I like to think of different ways of doing it and if you can think about it for example if you're de designing like a more complex structure sometimes you could do like a flat data structure or like a data model meaning like each field is represented by itself or you could do like a nested one where one object reference to another object that could also reference another object and some of these objects are flat, having some of the properties. But uh, yeah, there's always pro and cons, like how you how easily you can access the data, how frequently you want to access it. The speed or efficiency isn't really the big issue, but certain ways storing could make querying more complex, more difficult. Like you had to go down more nested, you had to potentially join more. So like it's always good to think about some of these things. Like yeah. And I think at the end of the day, what happened was like I decided to go with one approach and it made more sense to me because like it really didn't have to be more complex than it has to be. So I'm just not going to go into detail about exactly what my approach is, but uh, another engineer could completely pick something else. And uh, after implementing the data model, you can go ahead and generally speaking, start creating some of these services, meaning like the APIs and uh, yeah that's pretty much what I did and afterwards you can easily test these with unit test or like even just run the server instance and uh, locally and then fetch against it like calling the API and so yeah it was pretty cool and uh, awesome I will keep you guys posted and uh, that's it for today and uh, before I go I had Indian food for dinner and for those of you that knows butter chicken all right guys see you guys tomorrow Hey guys, it's officially Friday and uh, yeah, so it has been a very chaotic day. I know I already showed you guys my morning routines, so today I skipped that part 
And um, yeah, let's jump straight to what happened this week. So I introduced you guys the overall design process, how to create a new feature at my company. And uh, I walk you guys through some of my thought process. And uh, it's very similar to system design if you think of it in a way that you want to first think about like the data model, the backend services, like what type of API that you want to provide. So I thought today I can talk more about like what's going to happen after you finish the project. Generally speaking, once the project is complete, what happens is like we, the person in charge of it, want to write up like a test plan. And uh, talking about the corner cases, how other people sh should test the application, as well as verify that everything current still works. Because a lot of time, your feature is on top of an existing system. You want to make sure it's still working. And not all companies have integrated the very complex test. A lot of times, if there's no test, then it's up to you to test it. So luckily for us, we do have a lot of test cases in place already. So when we create these features, we also come up with new tests. And uh, as long as all the tests passes, 80% of the time is like working as intended, like working correctly. But of course, like there are corner cases where something doesn't work because the test is not perfect. So you should go to the front application if it's a web application to verify that everything's still working. And uh, oh, great. So next up, sometime you have a QA team, which is like a testing team that will solely test teams projects and uh, we have that so like they will be testing our application throughout the week any day like when we submit like the request this is when the test plan comes in handy like you have to explain your application like what this is doing so they can have a better understanding of it and test more accurately while you're waiting for all the test result you will also be sharing all these with the ux team hopefully no surprises and the the general team like the cross-functional like pm anyone and uh, hopefully no one's surprised because like you already been talking about all these like the UX, the front end should look pretty much like as expected. A lot of times it's already in Figma, which is like a tool that can help you structure and lay out your web application. So you kind of have like a mock beforehand and you copy exactly what that is in your front end to make it pretty much look exactly like Figma. So like it, nothing should be surprising. like. They are the subject matter expert here, so they should be able to go in and uh, test the application. And uh, yeah, after that, everything should be good to go. And uh, maybe you will be able to launch. And uh, most importantly, say hi to my cat, Koji. But yeah, so for dinner today, I had kimbap. It's for those that don't know, it's like a Korean version of sushi. But it's not raw fish, but it's bulgogi beef. It's really good. Koji, say bye. So yeah, I hope this has been very helpful and uh, please let me know if you guys have any questions. And uh, a quick TLDR, you design it, you communicate really well with the cross-functional team and everyone. Agree, meet in the middle, everyone's happy, make it work, code it up, ship it, test it, and uh, launch, celebrate. Amazing. And uh, of course, if you want to see more content like this, Please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe for Koji.